Hello everyone, Oliver from Scholarcy here. In this video, we're going to run through how you can get started with Scholarcy, how you can customise it to suit your needs, and how it can fit around your work schedule. Let's get started. So now that we're logged into Scholarcy Library, we're going to head over first to the Settings tab so we can customise how we interact with papers and Scholarcy Library. So we'll click on Settings on the left-hand ribbon menu. And what we'll find is it immediately opens up the Import Settings. This is a nice way because we can customise how the papers then get presented once we're viewing them as flashcards. So the first option we've got here is summarised by section. And what you'll find is certain textbooks and most academic articles will be formed into a series of subsections to display all of the information. You can choose whether or not each of these sections are summarised independently or if the whole text is summarised together as one. You can choose whether or not it is rewritten in the third person most academic articles, however, already will be in the third person, so you might not have to worry about this one. Then you can go through and choose the summary length and the number of scholarly highlights that appear. This is quite nice for customising how long or how short you'd like the summary to be. I prefer to have it a bit longer so I get a good, accurate summary for me, but you can choose that based off of your own preferences. And lastly, within import, you can go through and choose whether or not it extracts figures and tables for you. So now we're going to jump into the view settings so we can customise how we can view our flashcards within our Scholarcy Library. The first option we've got under flashcard settings is also highlighting. So this will be how our highlights appear within our text. Do you want to have them turned on or off? I'm a big fan of the spotlight feature, so I'm going to keep the highlights on, but you can choose this based off of your own preference. We've also got the Wikipedia links. So do you want to have a link out to a Wikipedia article whenever one of the key concepts comes up in the text? I like to keep this on so I can take a deep dive if I don't fully understand the subject. But if you're a subject matter expert, you can turn this off so you don't have any distractions. And underneath that, we've got the section snippet. So do you want to have each section visible in its own flashcard section? I've got that turned on because I quite like to have it in its own block. I can jump into just the results if I'd like to. Then underneath that, we've got the font. So default is set to Laura. We've got a few different options there that you can scroll through and customise based off of your own preference. Same with the citation format. So we've got APA, Vancouver and Harvard. APA will be the default there. So alongside the flashcard settings, we've also got the library settings. So on here, you can choose how many rows per page you've got it set to. The default is 25, which is what I've kept mine on, but you can put it all the way up to 200 if you'd like to scroll through many more. And underneath that, you can choose what information is visible in the columns. So you've got title, author, year, date added, headline, and number of citations. Personally, I prefer to keep on title, the headline, and the number of citations added as the bare minimum, since if I've got an RSS feed feeding in more papers, or if I just want to screen a paper that I've already read before, having the number of citations, having the headlines, really useful information alongside the title. So now the only settings left to look at are the export settings. So if I click onto the last tab there, we can see we've got the export settings and the export defaults. What we can do under the export settings is change which content is and isn't exported whenever you decide to do so. And you can turn things off by clicking on the slider there. It will automatically save for you and turn it back on by clicking it again. Down the bottom, we can go through change the citation format. So again, it's APA, Vancouver and Harvard. So whatever reference style you want to click on, choose it there from the drop down. And lastly, we can go into the default format and choose between Word, RAS, References, Excel, Markdown and PowerPoint. Whatever works for you, set this as the default, then it's much faster whenever it comes to exporting. So now that we've learned how to customise quality to our own preferences by adjusting the settings, Let's create a new library so we can start importing papers. Let's start by clicking on Create Library. Doing this will open up a brand new, fresh library with no name. So let's begin by naming it Biochemistry. We can confirm this either by clicking the tick or pressing Enter on our keyboard. What we can also do now is click on to reorder libraries, where we can click and drag to change it to a different position. Save changes will confirm this. It's important to add that whichever library we have at the top of our list will be the one that papers are added to when we save them from the browser extension. Let's now jump into the library that I've just created so we can make a subfolder to add more papers to. So once I've opened it up, we can click on Create Folder. I'm going to name this one Subfolder. 
So now that we've created a new library and a folder within it, we're ready to start importing some papers. Before we do this, let's first check that our Zotero integration is properly connected. We can do this by heading over to Profile, and then from here, scrolling down, so when you can see Zotero configuration and check that it says connected. If yours doesn't, there'll be a video in the description down below that will show you the steps you need to take to do so. Let's head back over to our folder, click onto it. What we can do from here is go onto Import, and then here we'll click on the drop down below, click on Zotero, and we can go through and start importing papers from here. I'm going to click on my folder Scholarly Library, and I'm going to select the first paper from this, and click on Import. So now that our paper's loaded, let's take a brief overview of what you can expect to find from the Scholarly flashcards. So initially what you'll find is the snapshot here. So this is a nice little overview of what the paper talks about. It gives you something to preempt when you go through the rest of the flashcard sections. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll down and show you the keywords, abstract, synopsis, highlights, and then lastly, summary. So under the keywords, we've got the key concepts that come up in the paper. And if you click onto any of these, it'll take you out into Wikipedia so you can take a deep dive into that specific topic at your own pace. Under the abstract, naturally, it gives you the abstract that appears in the paper. What you can also see is we've got the colour-coded highlights that appear in the Scholarly Spotlight as well. It makes it a bit easier to identify where the key concepts and important points come up in the paper. Below abstract, we've got the synopsis. So what you get here is a nice narrative overview of what the paper talks about, all of the main features, and a nice little rounding off of what to expect when reading further sections. After that, we've got the scholarly highlights. There's a really nice way of extracting the main points of the paper so you know roughly what it's talked about. Then after the highlights, we've got the summary. So you can go through here and each section will be summarized really nicely, really clearly, gives you a really good understanding of what each section actually talks about. If you aren't happy with this, however, you can go into the enhanced summary and change it to a different reading level, one that suits you. Another useful way to view papers in Scholarly is by using the browser extension. If you don't have this installed, there'll be a video in the description down below to get you caught up. But simply all you have to do is click on the browser extension, you can scroll through and you've got access to all of the normal flashcard sections that you'd hope to have on Scholarly Library. From here as well, you can click on Save to Library. This will open up in a new tab to show you that you've got it saved in the top library that you've got in your collection. If, however, this isn't where you want to save it, you can click on to organise, and from here you can scroll down until you find the collection that you'd like to save it into, click on the folder, then click move, and just like that it's been transferred over for you. So hopefully now you have a really good understanding of how to get started with Scholarly and how it can fit into your study routine. If you have any questions however, please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching.